One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. What's up guys, it's Harry Oss here. And today I'm gonna to be doing a video on market awareness. Um, I think this is a topic that kind of really needs to be covered. The reason why I'm kind of covering this is because I'm kind of seeing the same mistakes over and over again. I'm seeing the same mistakes in my DMs. I've seen, I'm seeing the same mistakes from long traders doing and short traders as well doing things that they really shouldn't be doing. And I just wanted to kind of make a video and address it to kind of guide people, um, you know, to, I guess, to kind of a video or a directory that kind of goes over some more of my personal rules and kind of gets into, you know, what I'm kind of thinking and what I'm kind of feeling, um, you know, in different, different scenarios and different types of markets and stuff like that. Um, you know, so without further ado, I guess I'll just get right into it. So the first thing I do going into the open is I start, I start measuring the day, right? How was pre-market? Was pre-market fast or was pre-market slow? What is the current market sediment? Are there any potential trades that I kind of see right now? Are there any kind of plans that I really like? Um, you know, what's my P&L going into the open? I think, you know, what your P&L is going into the open is going to really change the way that you trade and the way that you behave going into the open. So you really need to have an open mind. Okay, so one tip. When there's a lot of plays at the open, I let the hot chick identify itself. This is kind of a self-preservation tip for me because I find that, uh, you know, throughout everything, uh, you know, you really need to preserve your, your mental capital. So when we have five or six stocks running, you know, I might make a plan on the top two. But then if there's something that comes completely out of left field, that doesn't mean I start slamming buttons on that one, right? You know, you need to have a plan. And so if there's too many plays and I really can't feel like I can narrow it down to one or two, I'll just wait for the first 15 minutes. I'll just sit and wait because I don't want to have six different plans be all over and then not be able to nail one, right? Um, so, you know, it, let the hot chick identify itself. Um, you know, also when too many things are, are, are spread out, sometimes we never even get a hot chick or a runner. And the reason being is because the attention is on maybe uh, XYZ and WBS and this one and that one. And we have everything so spread out that when push comes to shove, we can never get the volume in one enough to push higher, right? And so that's also very important as well. And I always love it that when we have a super slow pre-market and we only have one or two gappers, we usually get a good enough runner in order to kind of, you know, we, we might get a 10, 20, 30% runner because everyone is on, you know, this little crowded ticker. All we have is this little crowded ticker to choose from. So it's also very important, right? You know, we, it depends on the day. Um, you know, we could have three stocks running at once and, you know, I, what one am I supposed to focus on, right? And, and and that can be really, really hard. So if there's ever any question, if you're ever debating yourself or you're trying to debate, oh, should I focus on this one, this one, this one, or this one? I usually like to kind of say to myself, okay, I'm going to wait for the first 15 minutes. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm okay to admit I don't really know what I'm doing. And so for that matter, you know, I'm out. This is another kind of tip for long traders, but also I think if you're a short trader, you know, you might be able to understand the psychology around kind of broken stocks. Most people's losses long are because there simply isn't enough volume to keep the stock higher. That's why it's important. Uh, that's why it's important that you know everyone's on the same page. If there's a hot chicken play, you know why are you longing something with little volume? I never want to feel like I'm competing with another stock. You know that's the hot chick. That is usually revenge trading and out of FOMO. You'll bleed out your account. Better to not trade at all than start trading. Uh, you know random stuff right out of FOMO completely true you know it's so funny because things can change on a dime in in this market it's similar to the weather right you know one minute I'm trading a stock pre-market and everything's going great you know I'm saying to myself wow we're in a great trade right now um, I'm up a lot and everything is going great and all of a sudden another stock pops up and I'm like uh-oh right uh-oh and the stock I'm in starts fading and starts fading. That's a good reason to maybe want to want to want to do one of two things, right? You either want to start exiting the position that you're in, or you just want to take it all off and say to yourself, "Okay, another hot chick has popped up. 
uh, now's my time to exit this one. A lot of people are going to be doing the same thing, right? And that's why it's the same thing with the plan. If we have eight different stocks to choose from, chances are everyone is feeling what you're feeling, right? If, if most people have been awake since seven, most people are feeling what you're feeling. And you can really use that to your advantage, right? If you're feeling like you've missed something, so are a lot of other people. And a lot of other people will probably continue to fight that stock long as well, right? And a lot of other people will keep going down the same over trading path as you. And so it's important that you, you measure your own emotions and always think to yourself, this is probably what other people are feeling as well, right? If a short seller sees a stock tank and they, they don't really get a pop to enter on and it just tanks, well, chances are everyone else is going to feel that FOMO as well. And maybe we get in a situation where another stock pops up, every short starts getting a little bit too anxious on it, and we end up squeezing. There's all these little things that can really help you, right? Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. I, I, I have touched on this as well, where too many plans in the morning. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but it can lead to disaster, right? If there's too much going on, I wait. I am patient. There is no need to feel any FOMO at the open. Let the trades you should be taking identify themselves. All you need is one good trade. Do not have your attention spread out. Don't. Do not have your attention spread out everywhere. Do not go to the liberty of creating eight different plans. It will not work. It just, it just won't. Create one or two or three. Most people cannot handle three in my opinion. Most people cannot handle three. You're better off paying attention to maybe two. Two that you think have the best chance. And if they don't work, then wow, um, you know, just be patient. Wait, right? This is the only game where you can, you can, uh, you can, you can like, you know, you, 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 you can take 30 minutes of planning and it can all go down the drain because another stock pops up, you know, and you're like, wow, just wasted 30 minutes, but it's time to go to work on the next one now. And it's time to shift my mindset and to shift the way I'm thinking because this one is not going to work. You know, it happened actually to me and I think a lot of people witnessed it. It was actually December 15th. Um, and what happened on that day? Well, on that day we had OCX and OCX was really kind of the main one. It was a stock that was uh, moving and had a lot of promise, was doing a bit of volume at the open. And all of a sudden, this other stock pops up. It starts with an A. And immediately, I rejected the idea. Immediately, I said to myself, you know what? No. I, it's not a, good, not a good long setup, I said. Austin agrees. Not a good long setup. Not, not one for us. We've seen stocks like that fade all the time. We have seen long stocks like that just fade, right? And <laughs> what happens? Stock starts grinding. Grinding, a lot of people go short on it underneath VWAP. Understandably so, it looked weak. And OCX starts fading. Um, so OCX, you know, I'm like, wow. Uh, every time OCX hit the first resistance level, it just couldn't break and couldn't break and couldn't break. So I just had to take it off. And then it would slam down. I'd say, well, OCX, I can buy on this line too. Buy on that line, come up a little bit hit the first kind of resistance line, my first target. I'm like, wow, it's really not being able to break this resistance. I got to take it off. I take it off, slam more. Meanwhile, in the background, we have this other A stock going. Another thing, and I've talked about this already, if you're attached to your PL on the day, you know, don't put it at risk, right? It, 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 even if you're up, uh, you know, a hundred bucks, let's say you're up a hundred bucks, you're like, wow, I'm a newer trader, I'm up $100, this is crazy. I can't believe I just made this $100 pre-market. Just walk away. You're doing yourself such a service by walking away. Wow, wow, when, you, when you're like, wow, 
I can't believe I'm up this much. This is, this is insane. This is great. This is crazy. Just walk away for the love of God. You, a, a snowball effect is in the works where you take one trade, you take another trade, another trade after that, a revenge trade, another one, and then you're down all your gains and you're like, what did I do? They're like, oh, but I think I see an opportunity. It's in that situation, you start seeing trades, right? You know, um, a lot of us, a lot of traders that are, are professionals, I believe are really kind of like uh, recovered gamblers from their, their first initial habits, right? Because now we just understand ourselves so well. We understand what everyone else is going through. And that's why I, I have sympathy with so many people, you know, and I try and help and I try and help. But, you know, in, 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 until you're willing to help yourself and follow these rules, you know, you know, you, you're just going to end up in the same situation. You need to be disciplined. You need to follow these rules, right? If you're up a lot pre-market, you need to start scaling your back, right? It's just like when you're, when you're in a good trade and you start slowly kind of selling in pieces on the way, right? It's all, you know, very, very similar where, you know, pay yourself, you know, walk away, protect your gains. You know, if, if you're in that, wow, I'm up a lot stage, just leave and say, well, this is what I made for the day. This is great. You know? Very, very, very important. Um, one rule that keeps me safe every day, I know I've already talked about this already, but you know, if I'm up a lot pre-market, I go slower at the open. And if I have kind of a slower pre-market or I don't trade pre-market, you know, there's some pre-markets I don't trade, then I'm going to go ahead and say to myself, okay, I can go a little bit faster at the market open. I think that's very, very important. Understand your psychology. You know, when you go back through your losses on the day, think about what happened on each individual day. Was it a day that you had missed something prior? Because those days where you missed something prior, you don't get the full story on your trader view or your statistics. You don't get to say, I, you don't get to check one in the box for FOMO, right? And so that's kind of important. And that's something to really kind of, you know, master from yourself. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.